if you have a unified graphics engine across all your platforms, that means all your platforms could potentially talk to each other. And why is that important? Now we'll talk about Pinball Royale. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Battle Royale. Battle Royale action. Let's go into this. Oh, it didn't. There we go. Now we'll play. Royale. I don't know. It's going to be bonkers. Like, it's just going to be so fun. It's an entire kind of new creation within Pinball FX. I think it's going to be a real pillar of the game for a long time. Um, it's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, you're going to have a lot of players all together at the same time. You're going to be able to do things to different players, affect their game. Um, and at the end, you're going to have a pinball wizard. So we'll be revealing a lot more about Pinball Royale in the time ahead. I know everyone's going to want to check it out. Like, what is it? We've been doing some early testing, a lot of prototyping, a lot of iteration. We are going to get some early feedback, so like a beta or something like that, right? So and I'll just say, no, none of us normal beta testers have beta tested it yet. So no. <laughs> I think it'll maybe be coming soon, but everything's been internal right now based off of... It was like, oh, really? You're, you're beta testing? What? Oh. <laughs> Anyway. Where's my key? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, moving on. So, um, yeah. yeah, you'll be able to check it out really soon. So Battle Royale games are often uh, seasonal. Are we going to see seasonal events with, with Pinball FX? Okay, actually, I'm going to pause it there. We're not going to talk about the seasonal thing yet because that's going to move into a different area. Let's talk Battle Royale, Jared. What exactly mm -hmm. is Battle Royale? Um, I wasn't familiar with it myself other than knowing that Nor Fortnite I. was. Um mm. But Mel, he's going to specifically mention um, Tetris 99, Fortnite, and uh, PUBG, which is Player Unknown Battleground. Um, as Huge game. Being these large uh, battle royale games. Tetris 99, I took a look at, and that's the one I think that is most likely to be our clue as to mm -hmm. what battle royale is going to look like. Um, so let me share this screen here. There we go. This is Tetris 99. Mm. So you got your main field right here in the middle, but look at all these over to the side. There is 99 of these play fields. Interesting mm. that they are all very much in the shape of a pinball table. <laughs> and these wrong. are all active. Like you can see them changing in real time as you're playing. This That's is pretty wild. Eh? This is huge, folks. This is huge because first off, this means that Zen is cracking the online gameplay aspect. If they can mm. crack it for this, having ninety nine fields up on the same time that you're battling against and affecting other players, that means we might just get true head to head. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, if you can crack ninety nine, I'm pretty sure you can crack four players. <laughs> or in real time because you know 99 like the interesting thing too is you know looking at the the tetris 99 screen yeah you see that like those play fields are essentially thumbnails mm -hmm. like the the amount of um power you would need to stream that level of fidelity is the reason why they can do 99 on screen at once right yeah like you don't like they're detailed enough and they're as you can see this there's a bit of intelligence here as well they're high contrast enough that you can still see the detail yeah. really zoomed out and really small. Well, what you're not seeing in this image, okay, over here you see this little uh, hexagon action. Well, yeah. what that is is who you're targeting. So in Tetris 99, uh, you yeah. can, by clearing uh, levels, by clearing rows, you can attack other players. And you choosing who to attack based on who's close to a KO, uh, random, just person attack people that are attacking you attack people that are mm -hmm. earning badges while they're playing um and there's little lines and and graphics that are popping and you know showing you who's doing what to you and warning you and all this stuff so it's very interactive you know what's going on so yeah. i started thinking about how would this work in pinball what would what would be the goal obviously your goal one would be to keep your ball alive i imagine yeah so how Don't would train. you how would you be earning points or upgrades to slam somebody else. And what would that slam be? I mean... Oh, it'd be like, like half-powered flippers, maybe? Uh, oh, sure. I mean, if you want to talk about the, the things that you can attack somebody with, yeah, reverse flippers, half-powered flippers. Oh, yeah. Uh, one flipper not working. Um, uh, Turn the table upside down. 
Do you, like we've seen that happen. Right? Weighted ball, uh, you know, with no bounce. Yeah, lead ball. Yeah, yeah lead, lead ball. ball. I mean, there's all sorts of things that you can you could do that way. Um, how would you send that attack? Hitting combo after combo would be a good one. Um, starting, mm -hmm. I don't know what tables they'd, they'd be using. Something tells me you're gonna. Ha it's not going to be. Hey, we're playing. You know this Williams table this this week or whatever. I, I have feeling that it's going to be a Zen original design. Um, you reckon? I kind of do, just because that would be it would make it easier. Wouldn't it? it would make it easier and make it run more efficiently over ninety nine <laughs> playfields. I don't know. Um, I could be. Otherwise, I could be you have to like redesign. You'd have to redesign the rules for what did what across. Right. All the tables. Right. I mean, Mel's already hinted that, you know, that's non-trivial to do physics. So imagine trying to implement that rule structure yeah. across all tables. And what happens if, you know, some tables don't have certain elements to them? Like right. if a table doesn't have bumpers or something like that, how are you going to tie that rule in? So you almost need to control. You're right. I think you probably would need to have some control over what tables appear. It might be a, like a sub-selection of tables. Like, you know, let's, let, let's pick a number like four play fields or something like that. That they know they can actually really tightly control, which is what the they do with. Life. They've done that with the online skills uh, multiplayer. Um, there's mm -hmm. only two tables at any given time, that, and usually they leave them those two tables up for months that uh, they're yeah. having everybody play with. Um, all right, well, this actually works. This goes into the next section, uh, the last section of video that we have, because um, this will further down the rabbit hole. Here we go. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, we're huge fans of games like uh, Fortnite and um, PUBG and all Fortnite, those games. PUBG. You know, we took a lot of inspiration from Tetris 99. Took and a lot of inspiration. Of seasonal events that allow us mm. to refresh content, to keep things interesting. Um, is That's kind of, you know, that's what we're going for. You're going to see that. So right there, seasons to refresh the content. That makes sense. So yeah, every now and then the table will change. Um, keep on going. It also allows us to do really fun and unique things with our brands and the IPs that we work with. So we get a lot of new creative freedom and a lot of new things. It's just going to keep it really fresh. Uh, it's going to be really kind of evolving on a constant basis. It's going to be really cool. I'm All right. So there you go. It, it's having fun with the licenses. They're going to be allowed to have that fun. Um, that's going to... Again, if you look at Fortnite, when they do a new season, all of a sudden there's new characters. You know, they had a period where it was like, you know, Deadpool and, and I don't know if I think it's right now it's Terminator or something like that. But I mean, you're able to bring in these licenses. So if all of a sudden you have a table that is licensed <laughs> in this fashion, um, then that will make the licensor mm -hmm. very happy. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's like, uh, well, you know, Fortnite even did things like live concerts in yeah. the game and stuff like that. Like, it was like Fortnite itself was just very much, well, an ecosystem or a platform that was basically able to take pretty much any license, shove it in there and make money from it. Right. So you can kind of see why Zen might want to be getting into this particular space. Now, the, <laughs> one, th <laughs> the one thing that people have been freaking yeah. out about and we mentioned at the beginning, was when Mel mentioned new business models. Mm. If there is one area that this works really well in, it would be your Battle Royale thing. Again, think about Fortnite. Think about Rocket League. Um, mm. They're free to play, but there is also, you can purchase packs. You can purchase a subscription, a season subscription. And what does that give you? It gives you extra... Um, extra stuff. So I had gone to Engadget and found them kind of doing a, a breakdown of what Fortnite does. Um, mm. We're saying a battle battle pass currently costs 950 V-Bucks or a little less than $8. Fortnite crew subscription makes sense, therefore, on the months that the battle pass is released because you're also getting a bonus 1,000 V-Bucks, so it's all of a sudden you're dealing with coins and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And it's it's basically for people that want to have exclusive gear that they're wearing, right? Yeah. Well, how does it's, that it's work? It's actually Chrome. It's just Chrome in-game. Right. Yeah. So how does that work with Pinball? Well, just look at the Williams app. You can have custom flippers, custom balls, custom ball trails. Mm -hmm. 
these are things that I would not be surprised if you're able to, by doing a subscription, have. Um, yeah, that's right. Your, bling out your thing, make yours unique. Um, yeah, because so when you're going head to head, your play field looks unique. Exactly. Um, yep, that's right. So I don't think that the model of the how we you know outright purchasing tables. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think no. that if there's going to be a subscription, again, don't know if there is or not. I'm just basing this off of people going ape shit over. <laughs> the the possibility of a subscription that this is where it would yeah. probably fall it's going to fall within your battle royale um that's what makes yeah. the most sense because that's the business model that's currently out there um and that would again be an influx of cash for when you're doing these licensed events that that yeah. helps pay the licensor to be able to do this event to have this custom thing and you know go from there so you know i'm actually thinking that the whole battle royale thing will be the the freemium part exactly of the product which means that like if you want to try out pinball fx um and you never perhaps seen it before you can go to the battle royale area you'll get access to a select number of tables available in the arenas and you can go nuts and play them and if you're again if you're not a diehard pinball fan you know, it will lead to sales. Like you'll go, gee, this table's really fun. I want to buy it. So you'll go and buy it. And, you know, it, it's just going to lead to sales if they do it right. I would, I almost think that, that. There's going to be some people who just won't. I think you're going to buy. have your free table, just like you have right now. Uh, you know, Fishtails is free Fishtails and, and uh, um, Sorcerer's Lair. Yes. I think you're still going to have that as your free. I think the Battle Royale... This is why I don't think that it's going to be, hey, we're Battle Royaling with uh, Getaway. I don't think mm -hmm. that's going to be it. I think it's going to literally be, uh, you know, hey, we're doing Star Wars this month. We created a Star Wars-themed Battle Royale pinball. Right. Right? You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see, like, a, a Joust-style, like, Battle Royale where they actually... You know, this goes down the path of head-to-head, -head, right? Mm -hmm. Where actually have like a, a joust or a um, elven g soccer ball style right um table where you can actually go head to head and actually do that sort of thing on there right yeah, but and, and the, part of what i'm saying is they're seeking new audience they're seeking different audience right yeah. so this this whole platform of pinball fx is kind of a catch-all for all the possible audiences that you might have you're going to yeah. have those that want the zen originals boom you got it you're going to have those that want the williams boom you got it you're going to have those that never played pinball before, but they love Battle Royale style games. You know, it's well, like they may have never it. have played Tetris normally, but they like this, you know, it's the, or like Pac-Man Championship. What You know, that was a Battle Royale th type thing, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's like so, you know, you, it's, you're bringing in players sneakily, <laughs> being mm. like, don't you like this? Well, while you're here, look, you're in this ecosystem. You downloaded Pinball FX so that you can play this game, why don't you try and sample some of our other wares? And there's where you're going to get the full, the actual sales, the product sales within the free game. So you're offering That's a lot right. of content for free, which is you'd be offering Battle Royale for free, you'd be offering those select tables for free um, yeah. that they always have, and that's what's going to entice and if you're having live events and live head to head or whatever, that's only going to bring in more type of people and keep the keep it active. If your platform appears active and has a lot of people in it and are engaged, that's more likely than that you're going to stay within it. But the whole live events thing is interesting. I wonder if that's going to almost be like, hey, let's get one of the um, the voice actors that's done you know the work for one of these tables in for an AMA. You know, and it'll actually be inside the app, so they'll stream the interview in the app, and it won't be available anywhere else. Like you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I wonder. Who knows? If, you know, I mean, you know. I, I kind of I think, know. and again, this is why they're probably rebooting. They're making it so the sky is the limit, yeah. and they can't do that currently with what they have. It it is a bit of a walled garden at the moment from that perspective. There are limitations on what FX3 can do. Um, and so, we were we were wondering what could possibly be the game plan for ten years. Why would you need a ten year plan? What would, where does pinball go from <laughs> from here, even five years from now? How is it wildly different? Well, 
but we've seen how wildly different it's got yeah like from like 2010 to now like just the innovation in pinball has like just absolutely gone through the roof so if 10 years produces this much innovation in pinball like yeah and and (laughs) if you're if you're seeing you know guns and roses from jjp doing online scoreboards that stern is starting to do that with uh would they do that with uh was it led zeppelin that was gonna have online or i can't remember but i know but they're talking about they're gonna finally start doing online leaderboards themselves yeah. clearly oh, no it was in that, it was in that um that uh terms of service document that was oh that's right, that's right that's right yeah yeah um but clearly even the real pinball companies are thinking in this direction so it only makes it's sense engagement city like they know it brings people back and they want to compete because people want to compete and you know it's hard at the moment um with the world and the state it's in so give us ways of doing it you know, yeah. people are craving it. So let's wrap this up. New pinball effects, and it's just called pinball effects. Mm. For the free, it sounds like that's just going to be it. There's not going to be sequels. It's like there. Windows 10. It's, I was just going to say, it's like Windows 10. It's Windows 10. Yeah, Windows 10 is now the version of Windows that you'll just have for you'll you, always have. decades. Yes. Yeah, it's now so Windows 10. It's now just going to be pinball effects. Um, yeah. Sometime in 2021. Yep. Yeah. Battle Royale. It's probably attached to pinball effects. So pinball effects. you're not going to be playing that until you get pinball effects. So that's mm. sometime in 2021. New IPs. Those are probably going to be being seen previously, previous to pinball effects. Possibly. I think so. Um, I would, I would mm. think um, with new tables coming out. Because IPs aren't technically tied to no. uh, software. Vote. No. No. Um New engine. Am I missing anything? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. There's a lot. There is a lot. Um, mm. That's what we're trying to you say. Just need to know, like as you said before, Chris. You like why it may seem like a non-announcement. Oh, it's a big announcement. <laughs> you just need to know what you're looking for in it and yes. tease it apart. Which I, I do yeah. want to point out that in one of these Reddit threads, uh, Mel gave a response. Well, the blockade listeners have the inside scoop. You think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yes, you do. Well, what we're saying is, yeah, sure. There's going to be stuff that's on the pinball show. And then you're going to come here, and then you're going to learn about everything that was possibly being said. Um, that's right. And, oh, you know, odds are we'll still be able to get Mel on here occasionally to, to really hammer in some things 